بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers today we'll start ayah 125 and inshallah taala we'll finish at ayah 128 so four ayah just before we start 125 we'll talk about the ayah 124 that we finished yesterday. Because it is uh, related to those that ayah, uh, so we, inshallah ta'ala, we just want to reflect quickly what was that ayah. Basically in ayah 124, Allah brings the story, the mention of Ibrahim alayhi salam for the first time in this surah. Um, before that, um, just to refresh your memory that we have talked about in the, in the surah up to this 124 ayah, we have talked about the Prophet Adam alayhi salam. The first Prophet we talked about in Surah Al-Baqarah is Adam alayhi salam, as you all remember. The story of you know Adam and uh, Allah created Adam and before Allah created Adam Allah talked to the, the angels. After Adam alayhi salam, we talk a lot about Musa alayhi salam, the incidents with Bani Israel and everything. Then also Allah mentioned Isa alayhi salam in one or two ayah and then also we talked about in one ayah about Sulaiman alayhi salam and this is the fourth prophet uh, and Rasul Ibrahim alayhi salam. So in that ayah 24 what did Allah say? Allah said that you know Ibrahim has gone through a lot of tests, a lot of difficult tests and he passed those tests. And because of this passing the test, we honored him. How we honored him? We made him the imam of the whole mankind. So Allah is saying, I make him the imam for the whole mankind. And as soon as Allah give this honor to Ibrahim Salam, in response to that, Ibrahim Salam said, what about my future generation? What about my zuriyat? And by saying that, Ibrahim Salam is concerned because he knows the responsibility imam is a very great responsibility. So he's concerned about the future generations. He's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what's going to happen to my future generation. And then in reply Allah said, yes, that's fine. But my guidance, my hidayah is not for the people who are wrongdoers. So uh, Allah is indicating that you know, some of the future generation of Ibrahim salam will be the wrongdoers. And you know, they won't be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in ayah 25, the story of uh, the Kaaba, the building of the Kaaba, uh, it comes here, and Allah is saying, and remember when we made the house, the Kaaba, a place of resort for mankind and a place of safety. So Allah is saying that, you know, that Allah has ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son, Ismail alayhi salam, that, you know, to make the Kaaba a place for security, peace, and prosperity. And then Allah is saying here that, you know, uh, uh, the Makam of Ibrahim is all know, people who went to Hajj, you know, the Makam of Ibrahim. So this is another honor. Because Ibrahim Salam is building the Kaaba, he is the main engineer, basically you can say, you know, the engineer of the Kaaba, he is the one who is doing this job. Allah has honored him again with one, one more time, that, you know, the Makam of Ibrahim, you take it, and Allah is telling all the believers, you take that as a musalla, so you pray there. And that's what we do, you know, we don't get space there, you know, there's too many people, but at least we, you know, our intention is there, we will face towards that. So Makam of Ibrahim, we pray, we, we, we take it as a musalla. And then Allah said, we command Ibrahim and Ismail that they should purify my house. So Allah is saying, and bring, Allah bring the, the, the name of Ismail alayhi salam. Why is that? As you all mentioned that, you know, because these are the ayah, this, this surah is for dedicated to the, the Jewish people of the Medina. And because they think that, you know, and actually even today if you talk to the Christian or Jewish, they will say that yes, Ibrahim tried to slaughter the son, Ishaq. They said the, the Ishaq is the son that he took and he tried to slaughter. But in their Bible, it is it's a different thing, but I just want to let you know that in the Bible it says, even in the Bible it says, that Ibrahim, God has commanded Ibrahim, Abraham, to slaughter his only son. To slaughter his only son. So when Ibrahim had only son, like if you have two sons, like you know, brother Ibrahim has two sons, right? When you had only one son, of course when you had your elder son, right? That's very clear. But you know, and if you talk to the Christian about this, uh, this verse of the Bible, what does that mean? They say, no, 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 this means actually only son means because Ismail alayhi salam is not from the, the, the uh, Sarah, you know, the wife of Ibrahim, he's from Hajira, the slave girl and all these things. This thing, that's what it means here. It doesn't mean the real son and all these things they said. So, you know, we don't go there, but you know, we believe this is Ismail alayhi salam and Allah is mentioning Ismail alayhi salam is here. And Allah is saying that I have commanded to purify the house. And why, why we should purify the house? Why are you building the Kaaba? Basically, Allah is saying the purpose of building the Kaaba. Allah is saying so that people can do Tawaf, so that people can do Ihtikaf, and so that people can do Ruku and Sujood. And Ruku and Sujood, obviously, it's Salah. So there's three things Allah is saying. And look at the order Allah is saying. Allah first says Tawaf, then Allah says Ihtikaf, then Allah says Ruku or Sujood. 
meaning the what is the most thing that is only happen in Kaaba, the Tawaf. Tawaf is the only thing that is only happen in Kaaba. There no where else can you know Tawaf can happen. Itikaf, yes, some mosque we can do Itikaf in this mosque and every mosque, but it is mainly happen in Kaaba because a lot of people are there. And sujood and ruku is the most common thing that outside of Kaaba it happens everywhere else. So Allah put the order in such a way that yes, first thing the Tawaf because that is the exclusive thing to Makkah, then the Ihtikaf, and then Ruku and Sujud, which combines the Salah, that happens everywhere, and you know, obviously in there. So this is the order of Salah. So in this ayah, that's why Allah said that this is the main purpose of building the Kaaba and giving the honor of uh, Ibrahim Salam for the Makkah and Ibrahim. Now, the Dua of Ibrahim, and this is a common that you all know, that is the Iskala Ibrahima, Rabbi Jani Hadal Bal Amina. So uh, Ibrahim is saying, making a Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Rabbi, and he's used the word Rabbi here. Rabbi means, does anyone know what is the meaning of Rabbi and Rabbana? What is the difference between Rabbi and Rabbana? There's a lot of dua with Rabbana, right? And the few dua with Rabbi. Except for Sayyid Yusuf, he is Arabic, he knows everything. So, anyone know what is the difference between Rabbana and Rabbi? Rabbana is my Lord or my Lord. No, Rabbi is my, my, my Lord. Rabbana means our Lord. So, first time he's saying my Lord. Ibrahim Islam is only including himself. So, Rabbi. Allah is saying, make this a peaceful city. And I talked about in an amazing Quran, if you remember, like in a few weeks back, there's another surah, surah number 14, that is surah to Ibrahim. In that surah, the same ayah comes. But where Ibrahim says, make this, a peace, make this city peaceful. Here in English, he says, make this a peaceful city. And where they, and other place, he said, make this a city peaceful. So there's two different things, because here at this time, the city is barren. There's nothing there. There's no city actually there. It's only Ibrahim al-Islam is building the Kaaba. So Allah is saying, make this city a peaceful city. And there's a lot of things about this ayah. And I told you, this dua is related to the last 10 surah of the Quran. Like, you know, when uh, Ibrahim al is asking the peace and prosperity, and Allah has accepted this dua, and that's why Allah saved the Makkah from the attack of, you know, Abraha, the surah to feel that we know. Anyway, we're not going to go into the last 10 surah. So here, uh, uh, Ibrahim al is asking the dua, and the same dua is asked in the surah to Ibrahim. Also, Ibrahim is saying that, you know, give peace and prosperity, in the meaning is like fruits. Fruits means, you know, like the food. Allah, uh, Ibrahim al Allah, Provided food for in this in this city, bring uh, fruits and you know, food for everybody for those people who believe in you, not for the other people. But then in response, Allah is saying no. Even people who are not believing, I will give them something for the little while, and that's what happened, right? In Makkah, not everybody believed in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The Quraysh, Abu Jahl, you know, uh, Abu Lahab, all these people they didn't believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But Allah has given them blessings in there. And you know, a lot of scholars commented on this ayah, Allah said, for a little while. But you know, if you look around you still today, there are a lot of kuffar, a lot of Christian, Jewish, atheists, they have a lot of money, big businessmen. Allah has given them so much thing. They have, Allah has given them, you know, good health, good children, good money and everything. But you know, why Allah is still saying kalila? Kalila means very small. That's not a small, that's a very big thing Allah given them. But if you compare all these things with the Jannah, or with the Jahannam, there is nothing. That's why Allah used the word Kalila. That is the explanation of this, you know. Some people, even, you know, Omar Adutana asked once, when he saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he wake up from the bed, and Rasulullah's back has the stripes, and he cried. He said, yeah, Rasulullah, I saw the emperor of the, of the Persia, and, you know, and the Roman, they have so much thing. You deserve more than this. Why are you in, in such a poor state? Why Allah is, keep us in a poor state? Then Rasulullah mentioned him, you know, this is nothing to the, to the you know, the comparison of the Jannah and Jahannam. In the next ayah, um, Ibrahim al Islam also saying, you know, uh, that you know, <coughs> remember when Ibrahim and his son Ismail were raising the foundation, so they are now building the Kaaba and saying, Our Lord Rabbana, <coughs> now it says Rabbana because now he's including his son. So now he's saying, Not my Lord, he's saying, Our Lord, you know, except the Rabbana Takabal Minna, Inna Kanta Samila, the, the, the Dua that we always do, but he said, Rabbana Takabal Minna, Inna Kanta Samila. So what basically they are saying, they are doing a very good thing. You know, obviously a good job. They're building a mosque. You know, if, when you go to a, like a fundraising mosque and you know you, they ask for money, like hundred dollar, two hundred, whatever, and they say, you know, brother, every dollar you give, you will give a, a sadaka zariya. So if a people come to this mosque and pray, you will give some sadaka for them. Imagine the sadaka of building the Kaaba. If you build a mosque, suppose in you know in a ponds, 
and you know, of course, you know, 10 people every day coming there, or praying, 100 people coming in Juma and praying there. Inshallah, every reward you are getting, every, you're getting a reward from them. Imagine the reward for Kaaba, from the beginning of the Kaaba till today, every day, 24 hours, every minute, people are still gathering there, making tawaf and making all these things, and how much reward they are getting. So they are making a good thing, and in that one, Ibrahim is still saying, Rabbana Taqabbal, meaning, oh Allah, accept what I am doing. You know, this is such an important, as a small eye, or such a, so much thing to say here, that, you know, he is doing such a great work, but still he is so much humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is saying that, what I am doing, maybe it's not right. Please Allah accept it from me. You know, look at our situation. If we do something for mosque, next day we work like this. Yes, we did this. I build this mosque. I build this one. I bring this skill. All little things. He is building the Kaaba for the whole Ummah. And still he is saying, oh Allah accept it from me. Maybe I did mistakes, except from both of us, maybe we made some mistakes. This is the humility that we should also have in our mind, you know. Just because we do something for the dumb of the, and we become, we think self-righteousness. Oh, we, I become the best. I have done so much for the thing. But you know, this is what we should learn from the Quran, from the, the, the lives of the prophets and the Rasuls. The next ayah from this one. The last ayah for today. This is another dua, uh, <coughs> the, the dua is still continuing, uh, Ibrahim a.s. and he is saying, Oh our Lord, make us submissive, meaning make us Muslim. So Ibrahim is saying, oh, oh our Lord, oh Allah, make me and my son submissive to you, meaning we should be always Muslim to you, meaning we always submit to you, whatever we do, we do it for yourself. Also, because in the previous side, Allah said what? The sum of your children will be disbeliever, I mean wrongdoer. Allah gave the indication to Ibrahim a.s. So then he is saying, at least make one group for my future generation, straight path. So at least make one group of my future generation keep in the straight path. And that dua is not expected. Who is this last generation? The generation of the Sahaba, the generation of the Muslim, right? So he is saying, I know there will be some generation from my ummah who, who will be like, you know, you know in, in the wrong path, but at least makes uh, one group of, from my uh, ummah who is in the straight path. And then he's saying, you know, and asking Allah to show how to worship him. Meaning asking here, Ibrahim al saying, Oh Allah, show us the hajj, the ritual of the worship. How we should, we should worship you. Because that time, they don't know how to worship. They build the Kaaba, but they don't know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to do the tawaf and everything. So he's saying, Oh Allah, show us everyone that how we can please you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then truly, you are the one who accepts repentance. So he's saying that, you know, because, you know, if you, if you do hajj, what is the greatest thing you do after your hajj? You know, all the, the, the famous hadith of the hajj, if your hajj is accepted, you come back with no sin, like a baby born from a newborn. So your tawbah has accepted. The tawbah is the greatest reward of the hajj. And that's what is mentioned here, that you know, Ibrahim is saying, Allah, accept our tawbah because innahu tawbah abu rahim, because you are the, the, the most honorable and you are the acceptor of the, the, of the repentance. So inshallah, we'll finish it here today. The another ayah after the ayah, ayah number 120, and there's another dua. So this whole passage, starting from 124 to 129, is the dua of Ibrahim. And this dua has so much to do with the life of our Prophet Sallallahu Inshallah, Allah, tomorrow we'll see in the ayah number 129, Ibrahim Salaam specifically ask a Rasul. He is asking Allah Subhanahu wa Allah, send a Rasul among ourselves. And that dua is a very famous dua. And that is the acceptance, the dua accepted, and that is the result of Allah sending Rasulullah Sallallahu Imagine what a dua of Ibrahim salam, that his dua was answered by the Prophet Muhammad salam, that Allah sent the best human being, best Rasul, and he sent it to Makkah to fulfill his legacy and to get the deen of Islam.